Government in nearly 100 water projects at CWC, Mr. Gopal Krishnan made some of them world class, piloting noble approaches, setting a new pace for future projects. Northworthy being 262 meters high, Tehri Dam on Bhagirathi River in Himalayas. He retired as member CWC. His engagement post-retirement as the coordinator of government of India's high-level task force on interlinking of rivers in 2003 that addressed different aspects of the overall projects like environmental, legal, and financial issues related in two action plans, which timely equipped the government with additional technical resource knowledge base. His capabilities stood acknowledged globally by the peers in the sector with his unanimous choice as Secretary General of International Commission on Irrigation and Drainage, ICID, which is headquartered in New Delhi. He is positioned among 20 top water resources scientists in the world by the American Academy of Water Resource <coughs> Engineers, recognizing his advanced expertise. He will be sharing with us today energy water nexus. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues in the dais and uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed my privilege to be amidst you uh, this morning. And I'm grateful to Dr. Naidu. In fact, uh, the invitation I could really get from the yesterday, uh, late in the evening, I tried to throw some material for you because uh, while you are at energy management and research, in fact, I was here last year during the Naidu, and uh, then I found the key role that water plays when one thinks of energy, uh, we must bring it out. And, uh, and that this opportunity came and what I am going to try to tell you is uh, not only that energy management uh, is uh, within the energy box, uh, you have to look beyond the energy box and that's why the water has a very, very key role in subterranean to linkage with that of energy and I am sure that uh, in the coming years you will try to put uh, great attention on this particular uh, nexus between energy and water. You would have found that I have put energy water on food. Since uh, over 70 to 70 percent of the water is consumed for uh, production of food, uh, we have to think of food, and that is very essential, food security. So I thought uh, beyond energy and water security, let us also keep in view the food security and countries like ours, you know, livelihood security for those who work for it. Uh, so it is an uh, energy, water, food security. And uh, even energy and food <coughs> nexus is quite a bit. Uh, the way we are moving in the future, it is the energy which right from uh, crop production to whatever you get on the table, the entire energy processes are also supported by energy. What is the driving force? Uh, I will get back to the capacity building part at the end. Uh, we are a growing population right now. It is touching about 7 billion people around the globe, and our own is also not less than 1.3 billion. And uh, the population growth is going to ask for mostly a lot of energy, which we must have been implemented if we want in the very representation. And there is also uh, an estimation that the food demand is going to be up by nearly 70% globally, but in for countries like India, it is going to be as much as 100%. And what matters is water and, of course, energy. What supply energy and food security will face difficult trade-offs and we is going to ask for a high managerial wisdom at all levels. That's why your role is going to matter in the near future. The challenge of bring, bring, bridging this increased gap in demand and supply in energy, in water and food shall require a very comprehensive action. So, 
for our friends, we are at the crossroads because uh, the scarcity situations are prevailing in many of the developing countries. And uh, what is also happening, even the sources that have been developed, the efficiency is not as much. And that's what we find, and in respect of even the developed world, there is a sort of a complacency and wastage, and uh, somehow uh, one has to. I, I like the morning speak, uh, speech of our Dr. Bala, who tried to drive home uh, that the world can't uh, continue to stand up to this greed, we have to face the need. So that is my last bullet, which is trying to address uh, the, the consumption rates also have come up. And if this were to be possible, we are there for a sort of green economy. This is defined as a, a, for a, an economy that results in improved human well-being and reduced in inequalities over the long run, while not exposing future generations to significant environmental risks and ecological scarcities. Sometimes we do, do we, we have development, but at the cost of environment. And it is time for us to rethink and to see how best to dovetail the concerns of environmental preservation, but also acknowledge the imperatives for development, especially in a country like ours. So at the tipping point, at the internal cages and interdependency, as we get to better understand the planetary limits of growth and cons consumption in an environmentally constrained world, well, this makes us acquire new and more vigorous dimensions. Achieving water, energy and food security has become more urgent and even more difficult uh, and complicated. So this is something that came up in the Rio 2012 process, uh, something going on globally. And uh, also it is one of the issues of the World Economic uh, Forum. So here we are. The water resources at the center, since I am a water man, I have to take you can also consider energies in part like that.